to church on Easter as a ritual of sorts. Yeah. But I'm thankful to be here, and I'm thankful that I know why I'm here today. All right. Amen. I know what I'm celebrating today. All right, right. It was this day, 2,000 years ago, that a man arose from the dead. Come on, somebody. Amen. He beat death. Yes. He conquered yes. death. Yes. And it is because of that conquering of death that I have life. Glory to God. Amen. I'm so thankful for everything that Jesus has done in the ministry way back then because it affects me still today. Right. And I was thinking this morning on the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And I thought that he and I, I think I put it on Facebook. He rose so that I could fly. Glory yeah. to God. Is that sacrifice and raising of the dead that gives me the keys to the kingdom of heaven. And so at this time, while we're thinking about the death of Christ and the resurrection, I'd like to introduce our pastor, our bishop over Oklahoma, Texas, and Louisiana, the Honorable Bishop Weatherly, to give us a word from the Lord today. Say amen. 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 Come on, give God some praise in here. Come on, give God praise in here. I don't deserve anything, but God deserves the praise and the honor because He is. He is our everything to God. Um, I'm appreciative. You, you, you know what? You could be seated. We'll normally have you stand for the word, but I, I, I like following the Holy Ghost. I like following the Holy Ghost because the Holy Ghost is uh, a lot better than I am. He knows exactly what to do and how to do it, uh, with or without me. And so I appreciate God for his mercy, for his kindness, and for his love. Today, we are blessed today. We are blessed today. And you know uh, that I'm not a holiday preacher. Right, right. right. And uh, not, to, not to try to change anything, but... Maybe to clarify uh, something today, I want to clarify this was not the death of the Savior. Uh, this is not the same uh, time and all of that, but we need to recognize that this is a time that the world has chosen to honor it, and our United States of America has chosen to honor it in this day and in this uh, time period. Uh, but I, I want to make sure that we understand that uh, we don't have the same time frame as uh, the Jewish people. And I just want to make sure that's clear. Uh, I, I, I'm i not trying to uh, uh, rile anybody that chose this day to celebrate it. And I'm not uh, trying to say you can't celebrate on this day or it's wrong. I believe that the Bible tells me every day is holy unto the Lord. Amen. Everything that I do, whatever I am, whatever I eat, whatever I don't eat, is holy unto the Lord. That what I'm doing is not of myself or for myself, but everything that I do, when I rise up in the morning on Monday morning, it's supposed to be holy unto the Lord. And when I raise up on Wednesday, it's supposed to be holy. When I go to bed on Friday night, it's supposed to be holy unto the Lord. Whatever I do, no matter where I go, it's got to be holy unto the Lord. And as I got here this morning, I began to think upon the Lord. And I began to think of everybody that's doing these, uh, all these different services and plays. And, and I'm not opposed to none of that. But I'm a different kind of preacher if you haven't figured out by now. I'm not ruled by the way the world does this thing. I want God and His Holy Ghost power to open up my mind and to show me what it is the Lord wants to speak to His people. Controlled by this world. Romans 12 and 2 says, Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and perfect will of God. And I rose here this morning uh, when God began to deal with my spirit. And, and it is not about Easter baskets today. And it's not about the stone being rolled away from the tomb today. It's not about a play that's being done. It's not about a bunny that, that produces eggs. I want to start 
understand that that policy has got the world in the whirlwind of stuff and they don't even understand what they're doing. They don't understand how it's an offense to God that you're going to try to promote an animal to show off what God is. I'm stricken in my soul today. It bothers me in my Holy Ghost heart that you would lower God. To one of his creatures. She would lower God to an unborn chicken. It bothers me that we teach these children all kinds of things that are not about God. Amen. I think it's a travesty today. So, Bishop, you get said there's other churches doing Easter egg hunts. Yeah. Go ahead and go to them if you want. Uh -huh. I said it. I want to follow. I don't know about you, but I want to follow the law. Amen. I know I'm crazy when they look at me. I know I'm off when they look at me. But I want to follow Jesus. God began to tell me to tell me my title. What it's about. God began to deal my spirit today. It's what it's about. It's not about your holidays. It's not about your observance of a holiday. It's not about what you think you should do. It's not about what we think we should make a program of. It's not about a special service. It's not about a special thing to have a play and reenact some things. Uh, I'm telling you, it's not about that. Let me tell you today, I won't be here long, but let me tell you, in the book of Matthew, chapter 18, and verse number 10, he said, take heed that you despise not one of these little ones. For I say unto you, that in heaven there are angels. Do you realize there are angels? When these little ones are born, when this child first came forth, God said, angels, Come on, somebody, Matthew chapter 18, verse 10. We need to understand what this is about. He said, take heed that ye despise not one of these little ones. For I say unto you that in heaven their angels do always behold the face of my Father, which is in heaven. What are you saying there, Bishop? I'm saying that every child, every man, woman, a boy and girl, they have angels that are dispatched, that look at the face of our God, that watch over us and go at his bidding. All right. <laughs> what is this about? It's about these little ones. It's about these little ones that we are looking over. I was thinking about as uh, we were doing this, uh, uh, we were giving honor and we were elevating uh, Minister Weatherly in his licensing. And I just began to think about it as God began to deal with me about my scripture. And when uh, immediately when the little child began to come up here, the old enemy of my soul began to begin to start to look and say, what is she doing up here? It's a solemn time. But God smote my spirit in the office back there. And he said, what are you preaching about today? What are you going to tell the people about today? It's about these little ones. All right. For better not to come. You want to get angry at me? You want to tell me something wrong with me because I let this little girl come wherever she wants in the sanctuary. I want her comfortable Amen. in the house of God. Amen. I want her to feel like she can come up low to the cultures. Right. That she can find a place where the man of God is preaching. Right. Mm -hmm. We've got to make restriction. I know there's a time where they need to learn. That's fine. But so many times we push them away as if they're not important. But God has dispatched angels around them. Dispatched angels around her, around you and I. There are angels according to the Bible if you believe it. There's angels. 
angels that are looking in the face of our God. Yep. Reporting on what's going on. You think you're all alone. You leave work and you come here and sit in this place uh, getting ready for service, Sister Williams. Uh, but I'm telling you, there are angels dispatched around about you uh, whenever you're going by yourself. Uh, you think you're alone, but I'm telling you, God's got some angels that are wrapped around you to protect you. He said, I'll be a father to the fathers. Come on, somebody. You ain't got a father in your life. That's a lie. You do too. I don't have a natural father. That's all right. You've got a heavenly father. There's more power Amen. than your heavenly father could ever do for you. Right. More ability to get what you need. More to supply your needs. God is watching us. God's got a band of angels that are surrounding us every day, that if we begin to get in trouble, they behold the face of God. God, your child here is in a bad situation. He says, go! Stop it before it happens. They travel in millions of miles. It takes weeks to get here. God says, go, and they're there. They're spirits. They ain't like us. Think, well, trouble's coming. It might take a while for them to get from heaven. Are you out of your mind? God spoke the earth into existence. He can't speak angels at your help. Come on, somebody. This is what it's about. This is what it's about. I believe all my soul today, this is what it's about. Here it is. For the Son of Man is come to save man. Help me, Holy Ghost. Help me, Holy Ghost. The Son of Man, Jesus Christ, the righteous, the crucified one, the one that bear our sins, the one that covers our sins through baptism in Jesus' name. That's the reason why we are here today. It isn't about Easter. It's about him Amen. and what he's done and what he tried to do for mankind. I'm telling you, I feel the Holy Ghost in this place today. It's not about what we want to do, but it's about the soul that God is trying to save. It's about the soul that God is trying to rescue. It's the souls that he came here for. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. Created you. In his own image, mm -hmm. in his own likeness, he created you. But he gave you a choice. He gave you your own will to do what you want. God gave you the ability to pick, to choose you this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods before the bloods, or the God after the floods. A lot of people don't even understand that scripture. The God before the floods were all kinds of different things. There was many that sought after other gods. Why do you think Noah began to preach so hard for 120 years? He prayed and he preached and he preached and he preached. And he kept telling them, hey, there is a storm coming. There's going to be water coming out of the sky. And they said, this man's a lunatic. This preacher done lost his mind. If you didn't know before the rain came when he was preaching about, before that day, water came from the ground and watered the earth. Yes. It had to sound insane, Sister Williams. It had to be my, what is wrong with this preacher? Mm -hmm. Come on. And I've been preaching for a lot of years. I started preaching back in 1981. And I was preaching back then just like I'm preaching today. There is a rain coming again. But it won't be water but fire from heaven. And it's going to burn up the earth. I sound crazy. Oh, the technology. Oh, 
what's going on. You want to place it on the technology of man. I have been guilty of saying it's probably a nuclear bomb. But one thing I know for sure, they didn't have a nuclear bomb in Sodom and Gomorrah. That's right. That's right. The same sickness that was in Noah's day was in Lot's day. And it's in our day. If you don't understand, we're dealing with a lot of demons in every place. Spiritual wickedness in high places. Principalities. Rulers of the world. They are dark. And everything about them is dark. This is what it's about. This is what it's about. For the Son of Man came. He's come to save that which is lost. Verse 12 said, How think ye, if a man have a hundred sheep, and one of them be gone astray, doth he not leave the ninety and nine and go into the mountains and seek that which is gone astray? Hey, I want you to understand there's a second part of this. He came to save every soul that is put in this earth. But honey, there's more to it right here. He, this is what it's about. There are some of us that have went astray. There are some of us that have called the path. There are some of us that went on our own and walked away from the fold. I'm preaching to them today as well as the brand new babies. If you're out there watching somewhere, I'm telling you, God desires for you to come home. I don't know if you know any backsliders, but God is calling them today. This is what it's about. All right. It's not about Easter bunnies. No. It's about recovering that which is gone. All right. He came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. This is what it's about. So many of the people we know, Sister Miller, we've worshiped with people down through the years. We've seen them at the altar weeping with tears flowing down their face. Come on, I know you know what I'm talking about, Sister Miller. We've seen them cry out to God in the darkest of hours, and they were able to meet God right here at this altar. And when the enemy come in, uh, and they were not able to fight or stand because of their stance, uh, maybe they weren't as strong as they ought to be. Uh, maybe they didn't pray and fast like they ought to. Uh, I don't know. Maybe they were hurt. Uh, I don't know the situation, but the enemy draw them away. This is what it's about today. He, which is spiritual. I lose almost 80% of the church. He, which is spiritual. The Bible says restore. Restore such a one. In the spirit of meekness. Consider it thyself, lest thou be tempted. You need to think about yourself, honey, and go to him without a judgmental spirit. Right. You need to believe with them. Please come home. Come on, I got a place where you can come and find rest for your soul. I got a place where you can come and you can be reunited with your father. You can have a sweet relationship. I know if you could just tell him, do you remember the day that you prayed to the Holy Ghost? You remember how the Holy Ghost came in and you felt that euphoric feeling of love and compassion. And there was a victory in your soul and you spake in other tongues. As the Spirit of God give utterance, you need to tell them in the spirit of humility. You need to tell them you can still have that. You haven't gone too far. See, the enemy's told them they're too far. Come on, this is what it's about. The enemy's told them they can't make it back. Then there's no room at the altar. But I remember the old song says there's still room. At the altar Amen. for you. There's room at the altar for you. Though millions have come, there's still room for one. 
There's room. There's room at the altar for you. What are you saying, Bishop? This is what it's about. It's not about your Easter eggs. It's not about you taking time to die stuff. It's not, it's not about you lying to your children saying that sometime, somewhere, uh, 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 some kind of a, a rabbit starts pooping out of uh, eggs. I'm telling you, there's something else. And it's not that. This is what it's about. Recovering the lost at any cost. It might take your time. Your precious time that you say is yours. Uh, I'm preaching now. You might think you're taking your time. If I go talk to them, if I spend my energy and my time with them, they may not come. Honey, they surely won't without it. That's right. Let me ask the question, where'd you get the time to begin with? All right. That's right. Who made you the keeper of your time? You can be taken out of the moment. Your time can be pulled away. You ever been at a job? Let me just get real. You ever been a boss? Been in charge of people? Had to deal with people? There are people on the job that aren't doing anything. When we say, you're wasting my time! You're wasting my time and you get rid of them! Right. Mm -hmm. What if the Lord looked at your time? He gave you 24 hours in the day. Mm -hmm. Tithe on that time is two hours and 40 minutes. Mm -hmm. Ooh, what? What? Yep. Wait a minute, Bishop. I've never heard it said like I'm telling you, you tithing on everything else. Watch you tithe it on your time. Yep. And your offering is supposed to be at least 5%. Yep. So you got an hour and 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. That's your offering at the minimum. So what are we up to now? Forty hours that belong to the Lord. What are you doing with your four hours? I wonder if the Lord said, I'm tired of you wasting my time. I'm taking your time away. Pastor, are you trying to scare No, I'm trying to make a seat. This is what it's about. My time is not my own. I'm bought with a price. I don't own myself. My life is hid in Christ. Most times we can't see anything. They can't see Christ because our life ain't hidden him. It's hidden us. And all they see is us. They don't see Christ. Every person in this place has a job to do. Amen. Everybody in this place has a calling and an official place to be. A job, if you will. That God has given you a gift and he intends for you to use it. If you got to go across the country, you got to do what God said to you. That's right. If you can't do it here, come somewhere and do it, but quit laying down on God's calling. I'm calling for you today to be about your father's business. All right. I'm calling for the church today to stop getting serious about the calling God's place on your life. Amen. Amen. Why? Don't you realize time is running out? Uh -huh. Noah preached for 120 years. I know he sounded like a lunatic saying there was rain coming and that it was going to flood the earth. Just like now. We're telling people time is running out. Time is short. It's time to be about your father's business. And people are saying, I've got more time. I'm not ready yet. I I don't have the education. I don't have, I don't, I don't, I don't. Excuses and excuses why we can't work and flow in the Holy Ghost. But I'm telling you today, you gotta throw that away. I'm telling you today, your excuses are over. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. You need to start following what God said do. Mm -hmm. 
Now I'm not telling you follow him without a pastor. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm not telling you to run off without being sent. Right. 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 You gotta be sent. Mm -hmm. But that does not control the anointing and the miracles of God that are in you. That's right. It does not control what God wants to do with your soul. I'm telling you, this is what it's about. About us living for God. It's about us doing what God said to you. And if so be that he find it, verily I say unto you, he rejoiceth more of that sheep than of the 99 which went astray. Sometimes people wonder about me. Sister Miller it may not shock you, but people in the church that have come here that have been here for a while. And new people come in and I give them my attention. I'm all about them. And people get mad. I've had people leave. Yeah. He don't care about me no more. Honey, I'm trying to reach somebody that may need to have more than you. Hopefully you've grown up and you're with the rest of the sheep. That's right. You're in the fold. What are you complaining about? You got food. You got shelter. You got fresh water. You got anointing. You have everything you need. Why are you worried about those that need help? It burns me up. Because this is what it's about. If I give you more attention than somebody else, thank God for it. If somebody don't like it, rain on them. You pick it over people. I'm more excited about people that are looking for more. Right. Right. That people are sitting around and don't care about nothing. The 99 are just mauling around, eating and drinking and excrement. A lot of people are doing a lot of excrement in the church. Mm -hmm. Oh, you, you don't want me to be all fancy, don't you? I'm trying to get real. There are people who have been around the church that haven't done nothing for decades. Get quiet. This is what it's about. This is what it's about. Even so, Listen to this. I'm not out of line. Come on, somebody. Even so, it is not the will of your Father, which is in heaven, that one of these little ones should perish. Hey, listen, I'm, I'm following the same will of the Lord. This is what it is. Come on, I want you to get in your spirit today and tell this is what it is. Come on, somebody say, this is what it is. This is what, this is what it is. The will of the Father being done. This is what it is. And souls being saved and people brought in. This is what it is. Right. Mm -hmm. It's what it's about. Tell your neighbor, this is what it's about. Yes, it ain't about you. It ain't about me. It's about souls and recovering of souls. This is what it's about. Come on. It's about souls and recovering souls. We're told in the New Testament the Apostle Paul has said we have been given the ministry of reconciliation. I've been preaching this for a while now. It keeps coming back in my spirit. We've been given the ministry of reconciliation. What? We're restoring mankind back to God. Right, right. Whether it's the first time or the second time or the 55th time. Mm -hmm. That person been in church more time. So what? They're here. Yep. Sister Williams gave a good lesson this morning. Mm -hmm. That's right. On judging people. Right. Mm -hmm. We got to learn. I don't care if they come and go 15,000 times as long as they keep coming back. The Bible says a good man talks seven times. Yep. It's up. Mm -hmm. I don't care how many times they fall. I got no judgment here. You know why the hardest thing for me to judge is? Because I'm in one. Right. Mm -hmm. If God had given up on me after the first one, I'd be lost. And my God, I'm thankful that he kept on. 
He dealt with me. He put up with me. He put up with all my junk. And he kept drawing me back. I did not deserve to be here. I deserve to be a preacher. I deserve to be a saint. I deserve to be anything. But God kept drawing me. He said, we'll get it together. Just give him a little time. Just give him a little time. I'm sure the angels were like, why don't you just give up on you? Have you seen him? All the mistakes he's made. So I go help him. Go see about him. I'll be your input. Just go. That's just about life. Church, this is what it's about. We know John 3.16. Uh -huh. We can quote it like anything again. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever shall shall believe in him should not what? Perish. Uh-oh. Should not perish. That one of these little ones, what? Perish. Should not perish. Should not one of these perish. It's not willing. He's not willing that one of these should perish. We have to understand that God is consistent through his word. This church has to be about saving souls and recovering broken lives. Broken relationships with the Lord. And you ain't the one to make that decision. We are here. This is what it's about now. Listen to me. We're here to love them right where they are. We're to love them as if there was never an offense. See, we talk about forgiveness. But we say in the back of the mind, well, I know they did some stuff. You're already in trouble with God just with a statement. Who are you? The Bible says to judge another man's sheep. Because you got a whole lot of skeletons in your closet if we open it up. Mm -hmm. I wonder if God, when we make all these statements and think all these things in our mind, I wonder if God would just expose us for who we really are and show the world what we've done. I wonder how quick we'd be mm -hmm. to look at our, our nose at somebody or to even have a thought in our mind about what somebody else did. See, we, we're... We know God's a gentleman. He don't expose us like that. Don't be funny. God can open up your closet door. Because right. uh -huh. he said that it wouldn't be revealed. He pulled the cover off. See, some of us are, are, are we're doing what we're doing because we got the cover. Uh -huh. But what if the Lord pulls the cover off? I tell you, it would change the way we love people. I don't want nobody knowing, so I'm just going to love you. I'm going to love you all my heart because I don't want God showing what I'm in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is what it's about, church. As you stand, this is what it's about. This is what it's about. When you don't see somebody here, you ought to be on your knees. God bless them. God help them. God encourage them. God strengthen them. God, give them that what they need to make it to your house. God, come down with your help. That's what it ought to be. That's what it should be. That's what the church is going to do. We're going to seek the Lord for the restoration of every soul. I don't care if they fit in with you or not. You better be careful. They might take your spot. I told y'all, Sister Mary had a family member through marriage that came here 